Hey, what's up guys? It's Ensel here, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can improve your FPS in Minecraft. And I've been working on this video for a few days now, and that's because I've been researching on pretty much every single way that you can improve FPS within Minecraft. And I'm pretty excited to show you guys that I think I have found the ultimate guide on being able to improve FPS pretty much down to the minorest things in this game. So with that being said, let's get right into this tutorial. All right, so we're going to be starting off with what I believe is going to affect your FPS the most in this game, and that is the type of client you use. So you can see right here, I have a few clients that are opened up. We're lucky that in 2019, we're living in a day and age where client-side anti-cheats or mod packs are sort of becoming mainstream within Minecraft. And these are all really, really great clients that will uh, help improve your FPS. So I got Lunar Client, Badline Client, PvP Lounge Client, and Hyperium. These are the four that I sort of recommend. There's a few others that you can try but uh, I believe these are the four most mainstream and probably will help people the most with just increasing FPS just from their client alone. Now, your mileage may vary when it comes to these. Uh, personally, I get the highest FPS on the Lunar Client. Um, however, I've heard that other clients work better for some people, so if you guys are really enthusiastic about uh, improving your FPS in this game, I really would take the time to just try out all these four at least and see what works best for you. So I also just want to note that as of now, the only ones that support 1.8 are Badline Client, Lounge Client, and Hyperium. Uh, however, Lunar Client will support 1.8 soon. Their client is in the works and probably should be available soon to the general public, but you're just going to have to wait on that one. But again, I really, really suggest trying all these out. Uh, for me, Lunar Client literally improved my FPS by like 400. It's crazy, but uh, yeah. Now, if you guys are bent on using Forge, there is the Frames Plus mod by Skier that is a really, really great alternative to the other mod packs that I listed. The only one downside of it is that it is paid, it is not free, so you are going to have to buy it. But if you are 100% using Forge, I really, really would look into this. It's a really great mod, I've used it before, and it really does help a lot. Now, this should be common sense to anyone who's playing Minecraft, but always use Optifine. It's a great mod that increases your FPS. Everyone knows about it. If you're not, you're living under a rock. Uh, if you're using any of the mod packs that I listed below, then you don't have to worry about it because Optifine is built in. But yeah, so one of the great things about using it, one of these custom mod packs is that it is really, really easy to increase the amount of RAM with them. Usually it's just within the settings, and from here you'll have a slider that'll let you increase the amount of RAM that you use. Now, uh, I really recommend using maybe at least one third of the amount of RAM you have. So I have eight gigabytes. I think using three gigabytes is perfectly fine in my situation. I really do recommend increasing the amount of RAM because the default RAM allocated to Minecraft is sort of low and it usually isn't that great. Um, on Badline Client, it's just as simple as going to settings right here and you have another slider for RAM that you can adjust. But uh, yeah, if you guys are using Forge or you're using the default launcher, increasing your RAM is still pretty easy. You just got to go to installation, go to whatever version that you're playing on, go ahead and click these three little dots right here, click on edit. Then you're going to hit more options and right here when it says JVM arguments, you're going to delete whatever's in that. You're going to type dash X M X and then the number of RAM that you want to use. So for me, if I want to use three gigabytes of RAM, I would do three G and then I would just type in that exact same thing one more time and then you're going to go ahead and click save. All right, so launching Minecraft and going into your options in game. Uh, I think a lot of these are pretty self-explanatory. General rule of thumb, if you don't know what it is, either leave it turned off or make it as low as possible. But I'm just going to go over a few of these. I'm not going to go over all of these. Um, first four are generally, I think, the most important. So if you're looking for the best FPS possible, you want graphics on fast, render distance as low as possible, smooth lighting, you want off, and then max frame rate, you generally want unlimited, and those will give you the best settings just for FPS alone. However, they will make your game look pretty trash, so it's up to you on what's more worth to you. Going into performance, generally the important settings in here are smooth FPS, you want that on, fast math, you want that on, fast render, you want that on. The other really big thing that you should try doing in your settings is try to change your resolution. So to do that, you just go to other and then full screen mode right here. 
You can just choose a list of resolutions. If you're playing on 1920 by 1080 and you're not getting good FPS, then I recommend turning it to 1280 by 720. And if that looks too bad for you, you can try changing it to 1600 by 900. But yeah, just mess around with your resolution. It can help a lot depending on your system. And then to apply it, you just want to unfull screen and full screen again. One underrated setting that I do want to talk about that I don't think a lot of people know about on 1.7, you'll see an option right here called Advanced OpenGL. Set that to fast. If you're on 1.8 or higher, this option will be called Use VBOS and you want to turn that to on. So once again, I do believe that all these other settings are pretty self-explanatory, but if you do want a tutorial going over every single setting then I will leave a video in the description that will go over every single setting. But yeah, just again, rule of thumb. Uh, if you don't know what it is, just turn it off or low. Do that with pretty much everything if you want higher FPS. But yeah. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is disable core parking. Now, if you don't know what core parking is, you can look it up for yourself. However, essentially, it's basically a useless feature in Windows that pretty much just limits your CPU just for the sake of efficiency. It's a really bad feature. Wouldn't recommend it for gaming at all. And and disabling it will improve your performance. So uh, I'm using a utility called Park Control. There are other alternative utilities that you can use. This is just the one that I prefer. Now, once you have the application installed, what you wanna do is click on this drop down right here and click on Bitsum Highest Performance. Uh, go ahead and click on Make Active and then click on Apply and then click on OK, and that's basically done. You have disabled core parking. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to tweak the registry to improve performance as much as possible. Now, if you don't know, there are a lot of things that you can do within the Windows registry to just uh, increase FPS, essentially. You can find guides about it online that will pretty much go over like every single value that you can possibly change that will give you better FPS. However, I do just have a really simple registry file right here that you just run and it will do all that for you and save you a lot of time. I want to make clear that I did not make this registry file. This is not mine. This is by Xander Bats and I will leave his channel in the description. But just running this registry file right here will go ahead and tweak most of the registry values that will affects FPS and will optimize your registry just for improving your FPS. Once you run this file, you will have to restart your PC for stuff to take effect, and I've already done that, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna go into your Windows settings, you wanna click on gaming, and right here where it says record game clips, screenshots, and broadcasting using game bar, you wanna disable this. When enabled, this option does reduce FPS for a lot of people that I know, and it's really, really terrible because it did the same thing to me. It was giving me garbage FPS until I disabled it, so make sure you leave this off. The next thing you want to do is you want to go click on game mode right here and enable game mode. Now game mode is sort of a hit or miss thing for some people. I'd say for the majority of people it helps. So I would leave it on. However, I would really just mess around with it. See what gives you be uh, better FPS leaving it on or off. But I wouldn't stress too much about it. I'd just turn it on and most of the time that will help you. While you're here, go ahead and click on system, go to notifications and uncheck these four boxes right here. Go ahead and back out to your settings again, click on privacy and scroll down all the way to background apps and you want to leave this turned off. Turning this off will just go ahead and disable all of the apps that Windows runs in the background that just hogs resources and just waste performance. After you've done all that, go ahead and hit your Windows key, search up control panel, go ahead and click on it click on system and security, go to power options, and then right over here, you wanna click on high performance. It's usually balanced by default. It's honestly just a waste being on balance, especially if you're on a desktop. Make sure it's always just set to high performance. This usually does impact your frames and it will help a lot just turning it on high performance. While you're in your control panel, go ahead and go to system and security, click on system, Go to Advanced System Settings. Under the Advanced tab, click on Settings next to Performance. And now you're gonna see a whole list of just visual options that usually just take up Windows resources. You can go through these yourself if you like and just customize it and just disable what you don't need. If you're really on a low-end system and you really want the best FPS possible, go ahead and check Adjust for Best Performance and I'll turn everything off. However, I do warn you that this will make your Windows look really bad. So I would really only do this if you're looking for the best FPS possible. Going back into your control panel, go ahead and click on Ease of Access. 
then ease of access center. Scroll down until you see the option turn off all necessary animations when possible. So checking this, it'll turn off a lot of Windows animations that just clutter and hog your resources, but again, it'll make your windows look sort of trashy. So, so if you really, really want the best FPS possible, then go ahead and check this, but I'm just gonna leave it unchecked because I do enjoy the Windows animations. Now you're gonna go back to your desktop and you're gonna hold your Windows key and press R on your keyboard and you're gonna type in the run box right here, percent temp percent. You're gonna click on enter. And right here are just a bunch of temporary files. You can see I have a lot, but you don't need these files at all. They just clutter your system for no reason. So just go ahead and highlight all of them and just go ahead and delete all of them. After you've done that, just go ahead and take a moment and just empty whatever's in your recycling bin. We'll essentially just free up a lot of crap that's on Windows 10 just to make it just more optimized for just performance in general. So uh, I will leave the download link in the description. Just go ahead and extract this to your desktop. You want to double click on the file and from here you want to find windows 10 debloater gui.ps1 just double click that go ahead and hit Control a on your keyboard to select all of it and then hit Control c to copy all of it after you've done that you want to go ahead and click your windows key and search up powershell and hit windows powershell the application from here hold Control and press v on your keyboard and you're going to paste everything that you just copied and then hit enter on your keyboard and this little menu should appear after you've done that so now you want to hit remove all bloatware right here and then it will go ahead and run the script within powershell as you can see but yeah, that's pretty much all I use Windows 10 Debloater for. There are a few other options right here that you can use that are useful. You can disable Cortana, uninstall OneDrive, uh, you can disable telemetry tasks and stuff. These are all options that you can mess around with yourself. I usually just leave it at remove all bloatware, but it's up to you. The, the other options do help a bit, so if you want to do them, then that is up to you. The next thing I like to do is just use a program called CCleaner to go ahead and clean up a bunch of temporary files and get rid of just unnecessary junk. Uh, download link is in the description. Once you have this open, go ahead and click on registry and click scan for issues. Also make sure all these are checked right here. And this will just scan for a bunch of registry issues. What you wanna do then is click fix selected issues. You can make a backup if you want. I usually don't, I just click on no and I just fix all of them and that usually works just fine. I also like to scan it one more time after I've done that because usually it'll create a few more issues and then you can just fix that scan again and we should be good. CCleaner also does have a bunch of other useful features to it. Uh, you can clear out a bunch of stuff like internet history, just random junk files from here. Uh, just go ahead and click on custom clean. You can find a bunch of settings here like internet cache or whatever browsers you're using. Um, just a, a bunch of stuff that you can clean out that'll just like give you space on your hard drive and remove a lot of the unnecessary clutter from Windows to give you some better performance. And you can also do this in the applications tab, just check what you want to clean and then you can just click on run cleaner. You can also go ahead and go to tools and go to the uninstall tab right here and this will just uh, give you a list of just every single application that you have installed on your computer. And you can just find what you don't need and just uninstall it and just try to remove just as much clutter as possible. Another little program I like to use in the background is called Timer Resolution and I will leave that in the description. Basically you just run this program in the background. Whenever you launch it it'll be on default but you click maximize and this will just lower your input lag and it'll also help with FPS a little bit depending on who you are. This is a really great program and it takes like no space in the background at all. I think this helps with input lag more than anything but yeah it's really really useful to have. So the next thing we are going to be doing is optimizing everything in our NVIDIA control panel. Now just keep in mind that you do need an NVIDIA graphics card for this to actually work. So go ahead and right click on your desktop, click on NVIDIA control panel. Once it's opened up, go ahead and click on adjust image settings with preview. So you see this window right here, click on use my preference emphasizing and then drag the slider all the way to performance and hit apply. The next thing you want to do is you want to click on manage 3D settings you want to make sure that the global settings tab is selected right here and you're just going to want to copy all my settings that I have selected so I'm just going to scroll down through them just copy all of them these settings will optimize your Nvidia control panel for performance so go ahead and copy these
So the last thing I want to touch on before this tutorial ends is overclocking, and I know not everyone can overclock. If you don't know what overclocking is, I'll leave tutorials down below on how you can do it, but um, if you're on a laptop, you won't be able to overclock, and only certain desktop CPUs can be overclockable. But overclocking your CPU and your GPU is essentially just giving your computer a free upgrade. It's free performance, there's no downside to it. I really highly recommend overclocking if you can do it. For me, overclocking my CPU you literally gave me 300 fps more alone in minecraft so it's really really nice again you're just being wasteful if you're not overclocking your system it's just free performance i'm telling you just please try to do it if you can anyways guys that's going to be just about it for this tutorial if this video helped you at all then please consider leaving a like if you have any more tips that you know to increase your fps then please leave a comment so other people can see it if you're not subscribed but you do like this type of content, then consider checking out my tutorials playlist, which I will leave in the description. But with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out!